In this video, we're going to talk about uh, an email that Michael Ross did with uh, a client where Michael Ross is actually an entertainer. He's not a speaker. Uh, he's an entertainer, but we're going to go over the process that he used in order to, to contact this person and I'm going to show him how to do it better. And so Michael Ross actually bought Event Finder, so he contacted this person the right way to start with and then it just comes down to doing the follow-up stuff. And here's what he said. So he said, hi, I saw your awards event and I was wondering who hires the entertainment for your event. Good job, Mike. Then he got a reply and they said, what type of entertainment do you do and at what cost? Now, this is actually a really good reply because most people, they'll just say like, no, get out of my face. And, and so uh, when someone shows any sign of interest, this is considered an opportunity. This is where you want to follow up. Now, obviously he's replying. So his reply was, the show is called Corporate Cabaret Comedy Variety. Price is dependent on a number of variables, which we can discuss. Most of the variables depend upon production requirements and who supplies them. There is certainly time to work out those details. Please tell me about your event, number of people, location, what has worked well for you in the past. Best regards, Michael Ross. Now, Michael actually asked me, like, how would I have changed this? What would I have done differently? And I would have done uh, a few things differently. First off, you beat around the bush. You just want to get straight to the point whenever you're talking to people, especially in an email. So when she said, what did she say? What type of entertainment do you do and at what cost? You didn't actually quote her a price or anything or didn't even come close to it. So you essentially beat around the bush in your in your reply. And so let's break down the response here. So when she said, what type of entertainment do you do and, and what's the cost? You said the show is called Corporate Cabaret Comedy and Variety. Well, she didn't ask you what the show was called. She asked you what the price was and she essentially wants to see a video. Everyone wants to see a video of you in action. It's always about show me, don't tell me. No matter what you do, whether you're selling SEO services, whether you're a coach, a speaker, no matter what you're selling, people are always saying in the back of their head, show me, don't tell me. Prove to me that you're worth whatever you're asking for. And so um, she, she essentially asked for your price and she wants to see a video and she doesn't really care what the show is called. Like she doesn't care if it's called Corporate Cabaret, if it's called uh, the impossible. She doesn't care what it's called. And so you just leave that out. And then when you said prices dependent on a number of variables, which we can discuss in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, why can't we discuss them now? Like, well, why did you say prices dependent on a number of variables, which we can discuss? And I'm, if I'm reading this, if I'm her and I'm reading this, I'm like, well, why don't we discuss it? Like that's literally what's going on inside the back of my mind. And when you said most of the variables depend upon production requirements and who supplies them, well, I think to myself, well, how does this help? Like, how does this help move the conversation along? You're not moving the, the sales process along. So when you said most of the variables depend upon production requirements and who supplies them, that's just a statement. It's like, okay, it depends on, on who supplies them. Okay, what, what's next? And, and so you have to always think along the lines of how are you moving the conversation along? And this is why you need to have in the back of your mind uh, an entire sales line process, an, an entire sales pipeline process where you understand what the next steps are so you don't make statements where it doesn't move the entire process along. And so then you said there's certainly a time to work out those details. And I think once again, why don't we work them out now? Like when is the time? It, there's nothing wrong with saying there's a time to work out the details. What's wrong is when you don't say what that time is. It's like, well, when is the time to work out the details? Tell me, like show me the, the time to work out those details. And then you said, uh, please tell me about your event, the number of people, location, uh, what worked well for you in the past. And you presented it so when, when you said that, you presented it as if you didn't know anything about their event. And so you contacted them about the event. Now you're saying, please tell me about your event, the number of people, all this stuff. And so you should already know most of the details about the event. When you're contacting them and they say like, uh, what do you charge? Things like that. And they show any sign of interest. You should show them that you actually did a little bit of research and you know about their event. 
The more you make them work, the less they respond to you. And so what happens is a lot of people, when they respond, when they reply, whether speakers, coaches, anyone, when people reply to an email, they try to reply in a very professional way. And by replying in a professional way, they essentially, they do the opposite. They, they, they become very boring and people realize that this is a professional response and I don't know how else to really put this because uh, I'm not saying to not be professional. I'm saying to think of this like a conversation as if you are literally talking to the person right there in front of you. And so if the conversation, when you're talking to a person in front of you, if that's different than when you are emailing someone, then you're doing something wrong in the email, unless you're like really socially awkward when you talk to people in person. But that, that's beside the point. Uh, and, and essentially what you're doing is um, you don't want to act so professional that you're not actually moving the conversation along. And so my response would have been something like this. Now, uh, let, well, let me go back to her response. So she says, what type of entertainment do you do and at what cost? Now, I would have said... Okay, uh, Barb, you can see the, the video of the show here at my website, xyz.com. My fee range is A to Z. I just need to know a few more details about your event first. I see that your event was at San Diego last year, at XYZ last year. Will it be there again this year or somewhere else? How long would, would you like me to present for? And at that point, that's when you ask questions that you don't know the answer to. But notice how I asked questions, but it was obvious that I knew about her event by saying things like, okay, so here, check out my website. My fee range is A to Z. I just need to know a few more details about your event first. I see that your event was at San Diego last year or wherever the event was. I see it was here last year. Will it be there again or somewhere else? By saying this, she knows that I researched her event. She knows that, okay, I know a little bit about her event. Then I go on to ask questions that I don't know the answer to. And so you just want to show them that you did the research. Just show them that you actually looked at them, that you know who they are. And you need to master the ability to communicate in a way where people want to do business with you. And, and you do that by showing people you know more about them then they know about you. Show them that you understand who they are, what they're trying to do. Just show them that you understand them. And by doing that, they're much more likely to do, to do business with you. So that's essentially how I would change the response. And then I would, at the end, I'd say like, look, if you don't hire me, then we got problems. Okay, maybe not, but that's essentially how I would uh, change the response.